Simply Scuba presents the Deco Stop Podcast. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Deco Stop Podcast. I'm Mark. And I'm also Mark. Oh, it's getting no. complicated now. Um, yeah, we're here to talk about scuba diving. Um, Sean and I have just been talking about some interesting yet unbelievable facts um, mm. that I learned last night. And it's that sharks are older than trees, um, but they're also older than the rings of Saturn, which is kind of one of those things where you're like, nah. But yeah, apparently it's legit. Sharks are older than trees. <laughs> it's just... It's just mind-boggling. Or sharks Sharks have been on the planet before trees. Not like there's this one really, really, really old, old shark. shark. <laughs> just got a big old beard. It's a bit wrinkly. <laughs> He's got a hearing aid. <laughs> what was that? I'm quite old, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so he got one to... <laughs> yep, yep. That's it. Oh, That's amazing. Yeah, no, I just thought that was interesting, and I thought I'd share that. Um Fantastic. So, um, so starting off with uh, with website updates. So, simply scuba. So, we got the new Aqualung Escape four millimeter wetsuit, um, which on the on the surface it looks kind of funky because it's like this uh, sort of olive grey, but it's got red details, which kind of looks a bit much to start with. But actually, especially when it's wet, it looks kind of cool. Yeah, once your eyes um, stop bleeding. Yeah, <laughs> but it's uh, it's made out of Ulex, um, which they don't really shout about enough on their uh, on their listing. Mm. And uh, and Ulex is a plant based alternative to neoprene, so it's much better for the environment. It's literally grown uh, and then turned into this foam. The external lining is made from recycled plastic bottles. Uh, the glue itself is, uh, is like solvent free. It's like water based glue. I have no idea how that works, but it's water based. Magic. Um, it's magic. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Just pixie dust yeah. mixed with water. Um, and um, and yeah. Uh, apparently, it doesn't come in a plastic bag. It comes in a um, uh, a like metal a container, bag. a safe. And then the only way you can use it is if you've got the combination. <laughs> That's it. We'll, we'll text you a code to, <laughs> to open it. Shipping is really expensive, but it's, it's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I thought that was quite interesting. Um, the uh, we also have the X Deep NX aluminium backplate. So if you just want the uh, the backplate, it's basically the backplate from the Zen and the NX Project wing. And so instead of just the traditional uh, sort of backplate design, it's that sort of X shape. It's got the skeleton design. You can fit a single piece harness to it, and it's got that uh, sort of new like harness shape. So it actually increases the shoulder space by twenty percent. But then when you put the waistband on and do it up, it actually like hunkers you into it. So it's very clever. I'll do a video um, as soon as I can yeah. just to uh, should I show you it. That is the uh, in my books that wins the most sexiest back plate award it's yeah it's just different and it's very x deep we need to make a badge sexiest back plate award and then stick it on the website <laughs> hey it'll sell certified from sean right. from deco stop boom I'll, I'll put that through to the it team um <laughs> we also have the uh, the new fourth element line markers uh, both the arrows and the cookies uh these are in collaboration with fourth element and waterhall they um they're basically made from recycled uh face masks and uh, and yeah they're basically line arrows and line cookies they do exactly the same thing as before tactile visual communication on a on a line to get you out of an overhead environment Except instead of using virgin plastics, uh, they're using recycled face masks from uh, from local hospitals, which is lovely. It's awesome. Um, and we're also working with Impact.com, which is a sort of affiliate scheme. So if you're interested in advertising, um, then it is worth just sort of going to Impact.com, just checking it out. Uh, if you are interested, sign up on uh, Impact.com and then uh, you'll probably either get sort of recommended us or uh, or we'll sort of hunt you out and uh, yeah we can work on some kind of affiliate scheme uh but yeah if you are a sort of an instagrammer or something then uh, yeah was... just just check it out and uh, sort of see yeah i was gonna say an interesting way of making some money if you were on our a win system so if you the previous incarnation of simply scuba we used to use a mm. system called a win if you are still logged into that if you use a win and waiting for updates 
you're not going to get any from us because we are now on yeah. this system so you have to reapply i guess because it's a whole new company so yeah yes. it's exciting yeah. i can't wait mm. to get my affiliate link mark are you going to accept me there's there's a little red flag next to your name on the on the list. I'm not sure why. Yeah. Um, so I'm used to that. I did it for everything. So, <laughs> um, moving on to the green initiative. So this is something that I was reading in our sustainability report uh, for 2020, which I thought was quite interesting, and I, I didn't actually know is that. Surf Dome, one of our like sister companies that deals with surfing, obviously, um, uh, they've no been working. Yeah, I know. They've been working with Bracenet um, for a few years now. Bracenet, if you don't know, um, if you ever in all of my videos, if you look on my left wrist, I've got a couple um, bracelets on that. They're actually made out of recycled ghost gear, which is old fishing gear that scuba divers have collected, cleaned, and then they turn it into bracelets and uh, like dog leashes and uh, sort of all sorts of different things uh, they even do one for cameras which i was looking at and i was thinking mm, do i need one no but anyway so um so surf dome have uh, have been working with bracenet and with every surfboard that surf dome sells they give away a free section of bracenet uh, recovered ghost gear as like a um a, a leash line or something i can't remember what it's called it's basically a small section of this um uh, uh, old fishing gear that you attach that kind of leash that goes on your ankle and uh, and yeah so so far in the in the 2020 report they said that they've um, they've used over a kilometer of this um, nice. of this ghost gear so um, sort of selling out um uh, or sending them out with surfboards um and i just thought that was cool um yeah if you haven't it's definitely worth checking out bracenet um because they do some uh, some sort of interesting stuff and um yeah, yeah, yeah. As I said, I, I'm, I've had three. I actually lost one, unfortunately, in the ocean. Um, so well done. You sent it back <laughs> to where it came from. Mark, that's it's because the it's because the the older design they um, they're basically magnets and uh, and they're they're pretty good for day to day. But when I was walking the dogs, um, I took my backpack off to um, to get some water so they could have a drink, and then I sort of put it back on and then continued on with my walk and it wasn't until later that I noticed that my bracelet had uh, come off the new ones have like this bayonet fitting so you have to like twist it and then pull it apart um, cool but um, but yeah check out bracenet um, I'm not sure if they still do that um, sort of thing there is a video on Surf Dome's YouTube uh, channel sort of going into it um, but um, I'll link all that below yeah. On YouTube for cool. our podcast listeners, yeah. yeah. I'll link Bracenet and that cool. video down below. It'll be pinned. Cool. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Uh, and on to social channel updates. Woohoo! So YouTube. Mm. Uh the vote is now live. So let me let me refresh. Mm -hmm. So uh obviously Surf Interval is voting. So if you want to vote for it, head over to our community tab on our YouTube channel and get there. So in last place we have at twenty five percent how you can uh, how you can be a better dive buddy that's never going to yeah. win so i'm going to officially nah. delete that off the record yeah. um i so. think we've done something similar though probably Maybe no that's we've why. done about a million yeah. things mark god knows how many videos we've done and it's scuba diving copy like, and I, paste i always think <laughs> like everyone's like you're going to run out of ideas and i'm like no there's there's no, we, no <laughs> there's always something we can, we something can interesting milk, we can milk this cow for a long time um anyway yeah so that's that's third place yeah, with 25 percent. second is mm -hmm. and i am surprised by this how scuba diving changes your everyday life with 37 okay. percent and okay. as of recording in mm -hmm. first place yeah. is the weirdest diving inventions at 38 percent so it is okay. picked between those i'm doing three fingers yeah. on the camera but That's i meant to put close. two and it's had 129 <laughs> votes so it's you know there's a podcast no one's going to see your fingers yeah, they will they, they will feel them <laughs> through the audio don't say that sean <laughs> You can feel my fingers. That's disgusting. You're going to feel my... No. No. Don't. Swiftly moving on. But yeah, anyway. So yeah, go go vote. It's a pretty pretty close one as of recording. So you're probably going to have to script two of those things or you're going to have to actually wait till Monday. 
Um, every vote counts. Every vote counts. But yeah, so that's pretty cool. And the only other you, you th- make you make it sound like this is a democracy. I just go, <laughs> yeah, that that'll be easy to write. I'm and gonna then, write that one. And then, and then <laughs> that's when it gets deleted. Woo! Yeah, sorry, there was a glitch in the matrix. Yeah, no, that one got the most votes. Yeah, yeah. Don't check. Like I said, <laughs> I think it was in Ask Mark. We're a dictatorship, guys. You do as we say. <laughs> you think that you have the run of the the, the channel, but you <clears> don't. <throat> <laughs> swiftly moving on before you realise what we're saying uh, Surf's <laughs> Interval is now linked with Two Minute Foundation as well as Empora so Empora have been sponsoring yeah. the Surf's Interval pretty much as soon as it went live kind of um, which again is a, mm-hmm. a, a rebrand version of the Friday feature videos that we used to do in the old Simply um, but now we had a conversation obviously Mark spoke about Two Minute Foundation and Two Minute Beach Clean Up and Two Minute Litter Pick Up basically what they're about is fantastic um and now they are going to be split uh, associated spon- well, not really sponsored because there's no money we're just shouting the praises of this awesome charity and it also does help the fact that we are a partner of that charity as well um but yeah, yeah so surface interval now is split between two minute foundation and empora so if you wants to clean the beaches clean the oceans remove ghost gear definitely check those guys out um, if you live in the UK, I don't, I'm not too sure whether they do it abroad yet, um, but you can request uh, cleaning kits, can't you? So like litter pickers mm. and stuff like that <clears> in your area to help clean your woods and your beach and all that sort of thing. But yeah, definitely worth mm. heading over to Two Minute Foundation or Beach Clean. Again, the links for that are going to be in Surface Interval, but I'll put a link to those guys uh, down below as well. But yeah, I'm very excited that um, it's happening yeah, very excited that they're um, they're coming together, which is cool. And uh, that's so that's YouTube. I'm going to swiftly move on to Instagram. Uh, things are heating up. It's ridiculous. So I knew the reposting and the, the, the you know you know rehashing, should we say, other people's content on in Instagram or pictures on Instagram would work, but things have again they're growing and growing and growing and that one picture i put up there's had like like nearly 300 likes and stuff which is a pretty big deal for a scuba diving on online retailer um with an mm. instagram that doesn't you know it does a lot but basically there's growth there which is really good and it's good to see that our, with the community is jumping over on board to instagram and is embracing that system as well which is something that we always wanted which is fantastic um, and that's Instagram. So, yeah, thanks to everyone who's following us. Um, if you don't follow us, do it now or Mark will cry one day. <laughs> um, and why? Then, why? Why have you not subscribed or followed us on Instagram? Stephen, why, why are you not oh, subscribed? You're shaming Stephen. Poor Stephen. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm sorry, Stephen, but it just had to be done. We had to throw you under the bus. <laughs> Had, uh, had to name and shame. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How dare you. We see your entire internet history. We do. <laughs> and when it comes to Simply Scuba or Instagram, there's just a blankness, and we're not happy <laughs> with that. How dare you. Um, I really am hoping there's going to be a couple of Stevens that are now going to follow. I'd love to see that. <laughs> so I'll be, I'll, 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 I'll be checking that over the weekend. Uh, if you don't do it, guys, like I said, Mark will cry. Uh, and then swiftly, lastly, onto the podcast... Um, you guys seem to really like yet last week's question because it's one of the most popular deco stops we've had in the, the first seven day period, I think, on the history of the podcast. What did we talk about? Uh, whether scuba to... diving should go mainstream. And oh. from the comments yeah. uh, on YouTube, yeah. uh, a lot of it is, no, please, please no, I don't want it to go mainstream. We like it as it is. Thank you very much. Or it was when I wrote that, when I wrote that sentence, whether <laughs> anyone else has added it. <laughs> added a comment saying yeah make it go mainstream but yeah i thought that was quite cool so it did really really well on um biggest show obviously as a podcast and it's been one of our most popular and certainly one of our most commented on the on youtube as well which is which is cool so thanks for that so every every mm-hmm. week is now going to be that same question just mm-hmm. in a slightly different order but yeah that that's social yeah, updates just reworded. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I was just reading through the news stories because uh, that is the next section. It, um, it is. So, starting off uh, with some sad news, a, uh, a British technical diving instructor uh, has died in Australia. He uh, he moved out there a while back, and um, and this is just kind of 
that reminder of take things seriously no matter how like advanced or like well trained you are things can still go wrong so do sort of take it safe not a great deal of information has been released i couldn't find too much um as a recording obviously the the most information that i can find is that surfers um basically sort of dragged him ashore uh, and he was uh he was pronounced dead um, from a, a possible cardiac arrest. Um, and and that's kind of all mm. the information that we have at the moment. Um, I mean, he was a, a GUE Tech 1 instructor, Paddy Tech Trimix instructor, uh, MSDT, GUE CCR1 rebreather, um, diver, wow. and an Explorers Club member. So he knew what he was doing, um, but things still go wrong. So if you are getting back into diving, do do it as uh, as safely as possible and uh, if you're in ev- ever uh, sort of any doubt just have a chat with your um uh, your, your gp your family doctor uh, whatever it is just to uh, sort of get yourself make sure that you are uh, sort of fit and healthy and everything's going well and check over your equipment as well mm. make sure it's uh, it's all working uh sort of all well and good uh next news story comes from a like a robots um sort of forum seminar sort of thing in china and um it's basically a a new robot drone that looks just like a fish um and they're like yeah this this is like a thing now there's there's a couple there's one which was apparently from the chinese navy uh called robo shark because of course they made a shark. Um, it's kind of small. It only looks about maybe three or four foot long. And That'd be well just, funny though. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but if they made a load yeah. of them and they captured them and they tried to fin them, it's like no, <laughs> that costs millions. <laughs> the fishing industry. My, my, f- <clears throat> my shark fin soup tastes a bit funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's got crunchy bits in it. <laughs> Serves you right. <laughs> um so uh so yeah so there's one that's uh that's a little shark and it's basically got a camera for a nose um but there's also another one which looks like a oh, what is it an arowana fish um it's kind of like a archer fish uh as i sort of see it and um and yeah they, they've painted it with the scales and all that kind of stuff it's got cameras for eyes apparently it's got like a six to eight hour like battery life and yeah these things just kind of like swim around um and just yeah spy on things on the surface so uh yeah this is the future we're gonna have a bunch of these like no, that's not mm-hmm. really a fish it's actually a, a plastic drone it's a plastic uh, drone on people and then this little mouth opens and it's got a mini mini gatling gun <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> closes it and goes back down <laughs> little laser and no one knows the wiser um yeah the um <laughs> The next one comes from Canada uh, and Connecticut uh, to a certain degree. And it's one of the whales that um, there was a huge court case um, sort of a few months back. They were looking to transport these beluga whales from a, um, uh, what was it? Was it in a marine park in uh, in Canada? And they they were looking to move it to Connecticut. Um, There was a lot of hoo-ha, a lot of uh, sort of, legal proceedings all that kind of stuff but they basically they've been um transited um and one of them died um it had a a problem with a a gastrointestinal condition and um it it just later it died it was on like 24 hour monitoring um around the clock sort of medical treatment and testing and all that kind of stuff um but yeah it it just died and they're blaming it yeah, they're they're blaming a pre-existing medical condition. No, mate, it's um, um, parcel force. The guys that shipped them, they manhandled. It was upside them. down. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> God damn it, parcel force. Uh, no. They should have used DHL or DPD. Much better. It's all right. Just throw it in the back. No, it's sad, isn't it? And a pre-existing condition. It's like, dude. Well, then, if it was pre-existing, then why did you move it? You should have just yeah, left it. Yeah. You knew that it wasn't. Yeah. It makes no sense. It's tough. It's tough because apparently it was in like a community of like 50 plus whales in like relatively. I mean, they're all small enclosures, but mm. for, for like a pod of 50, it was just way too cramped for them. So they're like, right, we're going to take some of these out. Um, and yeah, obviously the, uh, the stress. And I mean, would they, would this whale have died 
if it hadn't have been transported who knows um it's just one of those things um but yeah it, it kind of it reinforces the um um that sort of legal uh whatever it was the the case basically saying no you probably shouldn't have transported mm. them because looks what happened one of them has died um yeah hey um, the next one is on a similar note, but this is in Hawaii. Mark, a, do we um, actually have any positive news this week? Because it's all... <laughs> uh, probably, probably. <laughs> I'll, I'll go through the list as quick as I can. Um, so this one, yeah, so this one comes from Hawaii, and this is a, a dolphin, a Fraser's dolphin, uh, that was stranded on Maui in 2018. Uh, they basically did a, uh, oh, no, they call it a necropsy. It's, it's like an autopsy, but for an animal, uh, technically it's called a necropsy. And, uh, and they discovered this new strain of the Morbilla virus, um, which is a bit like, uh, is, is a bit like measles, but for dolphins. Um, so they're like, oh, actually, yeah, we probably need to pay attention to this because um, this could uh, sort of have widespread implications across like marine mammals. Um, so, yeah, there's there's that. So Another dolphins pandemic. dying natural from smallpox, measles. We're we're mm. transporting uh, beluga whales and killing them. <laughs> Tech divers are sadly dying tragically. Ah, oh. moving the, the, on to Spain. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Spain Spain has banned small boats from a stretch of water between Cape Trafalgar and Barbate because killer whales have basically just been beating up too many small boats recently. Yes. Good old killer whales. Sorry, orcas. I don't like calling them killer whales. Orcas. orcas. Um, so, um, yeah, <laughs> basically they, they've had this spate of um, sort of... They're calling it like boisterous um, killer whales, but yeah, they've been damaging small boats uh, to the point where some of them have their like rudders just ripped off, and then they're left stranded. So they have to call the the coast guard to tow them back, and they're basically saying, yeah, if you're sailing, they're saying especially sailing. Um, they don't mention motor boats. They mm. say it's more sail boats. So you might find because they're quiet, they don't have the uh, the propeller kind of spinning and making noise. Um, that yeah, a lot of um, orcas are yeah just having a bit of fun. Um, don't really realise that they're causing like this irreparable damage. Uh, and yeah, a lot of these boats Actually, literally have to be towed back to safety. They do. They're, they're, it's not in the report, <laughs> but the orcas have actually got a yacht manual in the water. And they're like, they flick through the page. It's like, that <clears> one <throat> looks like a Mark 72. Yeah, that's worth about 20 grand. Yep. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go smash um, into it. So, <laughs> so the ministry, um, the, the article doesn't actually say which, it just says the ministry. Of magic. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, since the 27th of March, uh, the date of the first encounter so far in 2021, the cetaceans have had 56 interactions with small sailboats, <laughs> at times causing rudder failure. Up to 25 cases required the services of Spain's maritime rescue to tow vehicles into port. Brilliant. So Love it. Yeah, that's, about f that's just under 50%. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's basically saying... Yeah, if you're sailing a small boat off the southern coast of Spain, don't just you're yeah you're not allowed in this area. It's 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 just too dangerous, basically. <laughs> uh, oof, and yeah. that's the way it's made. Orcas, mate, I tell you, they they really are the apex. It's, They're going to be killing it's us. It's just soon. all of a sudden though. It's um, this past like year or two because I don't remember these kind of stories years and years ago. It's, it's just a, oh, yeah, by the way, killer whales are just it's, beating up boats now. It's because they've had enough of our poop. They've had enough of us. <laughs> They're the apex in the ocean. They'll have anything. They're like, Do you know what? They're coming in here. They're polluting our oceans. Mm. They've got these fancy I, yachts spending all that money. I see it in I the catalogue. I'm going to go and attack them. <laughs> I, I keep seeing this advert. You know, at the bottom of like news pages, you have those really like clickbaity news articles things, and they got yeah, the most yeah. outlandish photos. One of them is so blatantly photoshopped. It's like two orcas, uh, like swimming together uh, towards one another, and in the middle is like this great white shark just doing this like ah kind of pose, and uh, and it's like oh yeah, killer whales are are sort of eating great white sharks and all this. I'm like. 
whilst yes, this this is a thing they they do hunt uh, great white sharks. Nobody took that photo. Let's be honest. Who's going to be in the water with a great white shark and killer whales whilst they're hunting, and just happily taking photo no that's ah, not gonna this be is so much fun. <laughs> i can't see anything happening with this when anything bad happening looks like they're in their hunting mode yeah. and there's yeah. a great white shark there yeah <laughs> perfect oh, anyway on to ha- on to happy news um so a um so this is a story that dates back uh just about 60 years and um and it's basically years and years ago, 60 years ago, um, the, it was a, a family member. They had this um, this family cottage uh, like on a lake or near a lake. It's basically a lake house, let's be honest. Mm. And um, and yeah, when the uh, when the neighbor was returning um, from like visiting the shops or whatever, basically crashed his boat um, and lost a case of whiskey. And uh, he, he apparently, so this this diver, current diver, he was 15 years old at the time, and he said that um, that the neighbour just just ran his boat uh, his boat into the dock at full speed uh, and just totaled it. Uh, um, awesome. The uh, the boat. He was boat getting away from over. an orca. He was getting away yeah. from an orca. Mate. Yeah. <laughs> boat went over. Whiskey went down into the uh, into the water. Uh, apparently they they tried like holding their breath and swimming down because you know whiskey um but uh, but no it, it was just it was too deep so um so they're like okay whatever 57 years later they're like oh you know what I, i've got this like scuba gear uh so they dove down and they've uh, they've recovered it and um uh, ironically he was actually born the same year that the bottles um were uh, sort of went down this uh, this sort of second diver yeah. who uh, who went to uh, to collect it and um, yeah they uh, they recovered it which I think is pretty cool as uh, I was on uh, Reddit yesterday and there was this diver no no correction this was um, just someone saying oh I need like divers help I lost my like gold chain necklace in uh, in this lake it's about 12 meters deep and um and like scuba diving friends of mine have gone down but they said it's so cold when when you get down to like 12 meters and it's just like silt like zero visibility like what would you recommend and uh, a lot of the divers bottle. are like yeah a lot of the divers are saying it's like right well it can be done but no one's going to do it for free obviously mm. um and it's going to suck um you, you're going to need like proper metal detectors and like a proper grid and like proper confidence in like zero viz and then i saw a great comment and it was just like what's the name of this lake <laughs> i was like yeah if, if i know the name of a lake where there's a gold chain i i might go visit <laughs> yeah definitely <clears throat> that's cool though. but yeah Try, oh, but trying to find because a gold chain as well. Because if it's sinking like twelve meters, it's probably got a decent speed uh, as it's sinking down, and then in like soft silt, that would have penetrated a fair way. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I remember doing a. Um, it was like a. a I, I keep saying check dive, but that's that's not it. Is we we're basically looking to um, to put a platform in this lake, and we wanted to anchor it at a certain point. So um, so it was like, oh, Mark, can you just dive down and see what the substrate's like? So I dove down and uh, and I got my torch on. The torch was fairly powerful. And um, and I was like, right, so that's silt. I was like, right, let me see, like, is it deep or whatnot? And, uh, and I put my other arm and I just, like, sunk it into this silt down to the shoulder. And I'm like, right, well, it's still soft. So, um, so I kind of, like, pulled it back up and my torch just disappeared i couldn't see the torch beam it was just so murky and this oh. was like three inches in front of my face i was like oh great so i'm just like okay let's just surface gently <laughs> i was like yeah we, we, we're gonna need something fairly substantial to uh, to anchor this but yeah trying to find stuff in silt um without a metal detector nah that's that's never gonna happen no especially oh. if you lost it like uh it's kind of around here yeah, <laughs> that sort of thing. Though. If it was me, I lost it. I would like. Well, the ocean's got it now. Just, just yeah. admit defeat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. 
No, nah, you're going to need some like Star Trek level scanner to uh, to find that from a distance. Exactly. There's no way you'll do it by touch. Yeah. Um, no. But a bottle of, of whiskey though, you can find that. That's easier. Yeah. Yeah. Bottle of whiskey, um, which now tastes like vinegar. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know whether it would age because in like because they're doing that with a lot of wine and stuff yeah, where yeah. they age it underwater because it's a more stable temperature and stuff and, and then people maybe nick the pressure it has some kind of effect <laughs> <laughs> they do that yeah that's true there there was that one um, a yeah. few weeks back <laughs> um, anyway the uh, the go diving show has announced a road show um, at endac here in the uk they need um, an asterisk on that road part mark they I have put it in block capitals. They need it's the go diving road show. It's so not a road show. It's a show in Endac because they're not going. They're going on the road to transport gear, I guess. Yeah, but that's the same for any exactly dive show, no, isn't it? <clears throat> no, but yes. <laughs> anyway, that's just me being picky. <coughs> it's a road show that's not a road show. You've got to go on the yeah. road to go to the show. So there we go. That's what yeah. they meant. Uh, so it's at Endac, um, if, and it's going to be September the 17th to the 19th. So if you're interested, you haven't been to a diving show, uh, it's definitely worth checking it out. Tickets are available now. Uh, there will be sort of, you can obviously go diving there. There's going to be talks from all sorts of different people like Andy Torbert, uh, Miranda Krestin, Krestovnikov, uh, Phil Short, all sorts of stuff and workshops as well, um, sort of just helping you sort of boost your skills. And yeah, obviously you can go diving in Endac as well. Uh, so Friday, Saturday and um, yeah, a few of the brands as well are going to be down there, which is going to be pretty cool. Um, tickets. Uh, the the cheapest is twenty five uh, pounds, which is for the the two day, the Friday and the Saturday ticket. Uh, if you only want to go on the uh, on the Saturday, it's twenty seven pound fifty, which doesn't. Oh, that includes one day's diving. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was wondering why it was so expensive. <laughs> Uh, but the two-day ticket is uh, is just staying dry. You, you don't get to. You can obviously then pay your uh, your entrance fees. Uh, on the Friday, though, if you pay £45, you get the day's diving, access to talks, access to workshops, uh, the Friday night barbecue, a limited edition T-shirt, uh, a 12-month subscription to Scuba Diver magazine, and one weekend ticket to the uh, the Go Diving show in March 2022. Um, or if you do the Friday and Saturday two-day plus ticket thing, it's £69. You can nice. dive both days talks uh workshops um friday night barbecue the t-shirt 12 month subscription and the uh, the weekend ticket to the um to next year's uh, go diving show uh so yeah if you just go to godivingshow.com uh you can book your tickets now um i don't think i'll be able to make it because i'm literally going on holiday on the sunday um i was never going to go anyway so don't worry about me <laughs> There's no point in us going there to film anything, so... No. No. Uh, I'm sure some people... Uh, yeah, they'll probably do a, a video of it because they've got some uh, sort of cameras and stuff now. Well, they, scuba diver mag. All the, all, the, all, the, all the talks and stuff, they'll have their own versions of it, won't they? It's, yeah. It's all good. It's good, though. It's, it's nice to finally have some sort of shows that aren't boring Zoom talk. I mean, they're not boring, but you know what I mean? Like, you can't immerse yourself yeah. in a Zoom... Uh, meeting really when some guys talking about no. stuff, but even the um, even the ones at um, oh, I can't remember the name of it, um, the Birmingham NEC. Um, it's like yeah, you kind of like walk around these stands and stuff, and you're like, okay, this is all very interesting, but no one, no one's actually diving. They, they do have like a little paddling pool mm. where you can try out rebreathers and stuff, but yeah, now it's actually. It's at a diving centre. There's a mm. diving lake there. You can actually sort of test things out. Yeah. Um, a few of the manufacturers have um, like played about with this. Uh, Sunto have done a few days at key dive centres um, sort of around the UK where, yeah, you know what? Here's a bunch of tester computers. Um, you can literally dive it. And then if you like it, hey, you can buy it here. Yeah. Um, That's good. So, uh, yeah. 
I think maybe this is the way you'll probably start to see more and more of these because you're out in the open, so you don't have to worry too much or as much about sort of COVID regulations and sort of mingling with people because you're outdoors. Um, it's a bit safer. So, um, yeah, maybe we're going to see sort of more of this going forward in the future. Yeah, I think also it helps out. So, like, you go to the NEC or whatever or Birmingham or in London, the XL, mm. and that sort of thing's good, but that's not helping like a the, the local area or, or the local dive schools you know having the fact that they can go to endac mm-hmm. so maybe yeah this year they go to endac but maybe next year depending on all, all, all the next version of their their road trip um yeah. think they might go to another dive center you know another yeah, quarry Bobster, or something. Stony, yeah, exactly yeah, you know Marie. what i mean so yeah. then then that's mm-hmm. just exposing people to that 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 dive as well so it's it's a win-win, really. Yeah, like you say, you're outside, but then you're mm. also you could dive a bit more. You're not in some rubbish because I've seen those pools and they're not that great. Let's be honest, they're not that great in the NEC and all that. Sort oh, what? Of thing. They, yeah, yeah, they're really not. <laughs> they're really not. So like that, like, I would be surprised if anyone did, did a try dive in there and were like, "This is amazing! I want to do it!" Oh my, <laughs> like you know what I mean? That I'm sure they enjoyed doing the having the underwater experience, but I very much doubt they yeah. fell in love with it, diving in one of those pools. Um, <laughs> on that, the couple of times yeah, that I've been chest, there, so chest chest deep water, yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But yeah, no, I think yeah, it's <clears> cool, <throat> mate. But yeah, that, that mm. that's my only guys who run the Go Diving Show, which I think is Scuba Diver. Um, maybe yeah. just maybe just drop the road. Doesn't. Just, <laughs> I mean, it's a bit late now. You never but... know. There, there might be there, there might be some little thing at the bottom. It's like, oh yeah, this is just the first stop on our road show, and they are actually carrying on to yeah, Hopefully. Bobster and Gildy and Stony and yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> or maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. They could have just um, put the go diving show at Endac. Yeah, but hey, shut uh, up, Sean. Moving. <clears throat> Moving on uh, to my product of the week. Uh, so I'm talking about the uh, the the XD NX aluminium backplate, um, just because it's it's different um, as opposed to like literally every backplate that I have. As much as they're they're slightly different, I've got like a funky black one as well. Hmm. Um, the the X Deep the the NX project is is substantially different it still has everything that you kind of recognize in like the the holes the mounting holes for uh, for your twinning bolts and whatnot and uh, slots for your your shoulder straps and all that kind of stuff but it's it's much more ergonomic they haven't looked at the traditional back plate and just gone copy paste and just laser etch the x deep logo on it they've actually changed the entire shape and like contours of the back plate to be like comfortable um so it's this new sort of x shape so the 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 upper sections are basically against your like sort of shoulder blades so they're spreading that force a bit more evenly the lower bits are a bit wider as well so it's a bit more comfortable um it kind of dips in and it's skeletonized around the uh, the central section so it's saving weight it's an aluminium alloy so it's in, so it's very light i haven't seen an actual weight for it mm. um I'm waiting for uh, to actually get my uh, my sample so that I can weigh it. It's minus um, minus ten grams. It's negative. It's they, so uh, they weight. put helium so in it. Yep, that's it. <laughs> um, but when it's on, um, but obviously I have seen it when it's put on the uh, the the Zen BCD and the uh, the Project NX or the NX Project, sorry. And um, it, the aluminium version, very very light, but still strong. Um, I've had some aluminium back plates where, because they've got this like funky like skeleton design, if you push on a certain section, it you can bend it with your fingers, which isn't great. Yeah. Obviously, where it needs where it needs to be strong, it is strong, but other sections, it's a bit. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. D- didn't expect that to bend. Um, but uh, but this one is uh, is sort of strong, and the geometrics that they've used are uh, sort of very clever. Um, the shoulder or the the entire harness assembly sort of system is very clever so instead of having the traditional um, section where the the shoulder strap it comes down and then it basically turns into the waistband on the x deep it the shoulder strap goes down and Mm. then the strap has to come back 
up a few inches and then it becomes your waistband. So that means that your shoulder straps are a little bit longer. So when you're getting kitted up, it's much easier. Cool. But then to stop it from like flopping around because you've got all this excess uh, sort of shoulder space, the waistband, when you do it up over on top of those shoulder straps, it basically tightens the shoulder straps without okay. the need of uh, a clip or a break in that harness. So that's very, very clever. And it also has a um, uh, like a V mounting point for your crotch strap. So instead of single mounting points, uh, sort of just above your butt, it has two, uh, sort of one on either side, and that way you can have a V-shaped crotch strap. So instead of one strap going between your legs, you have two, uh, which just spreads the weight and it's a bit more comfortable. No, it so elevates the butt, little... mate. It makes your butt look nice and firm underwater. That's the reason why XD <laughs> did that. <laughs> it was... It also adds an extra D-ring as well, um, so you can have two attachment points, um, which which is convenient. Um, so yeah, if you are in the market for a new backplate uh, and you do want something a bit more comfortable, a little bit different, uh, then yeah, check out the uh, the X Deep NX aluminium backplate. Uh, it'll be on the website. There'll be a link down in the description, and uh, I'll do a video as soon as I can. Um, yeah, I just need to get my uh, my hands on one so I can record a video. Uh, sorry, mate, I've bought uh, them all. That's it. I've bought them you all. You bought every single one, one of them, the, yep. the large and the small. That's yep. another thing. They come in two different sizes, which is cool. Um, so if you do struggle with uh, with most of the back plates because you just find them too long, they also mm. do a shorter version, uh, cool. which will be a bit more comfortable for you. Sweet. Yeah. Nice. Excellent. Sweet. Well, thank you very much for that. Buy one now, guys, uh -huh. before I do. <laughs> do it now right so question of the question i was gonna say question of the month now but it's not it's this week's question <laughs> so this is it's a question but it's broken up into several 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 parts should we say mark so oh, it's complicated with the world basically either on fire freezing up or <laughs> yeah. sinking yeah. which for scuba diving mm -hmm. is quite exciting you can go visit yeah, I'm up it, for that. in in 10 years time you'll be able to visit your old home underwater and get your old playstation out might be a bit. I've done a video on that, haven't I? Yeah. Like places I'd like to visit if they yeah. are underwater. Yeah. Because I I've always think about that in museums and stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, museums are bad now, Mark. We can't go to museums. They stole stuff. No, no, no. no. That's a big thing apparently yeah. now. Uh, which oh, is yeah, fair, we, fair we enough. Knew that. Anyway, that that that's yeah. another topic. That that's another. That's a, that's, <laughs> that's next week's deco stop we'll talk about museums uh but anyway yeah so with the world going code red what can we do as scuba divers or scuba diving enthusiasts uh, to help spread the mm -hmm. message so what can we do personally what we what yeah. can we do at our place of work um which is also for us our home so it's yeah, also yeah, what we right do now. personally um <laughs> and yep. the biggest question which has really come to light over the past well what six months year maybe um does the blame need to be more focused on corporations rather than individuals? Because obviously we've been yes. we've been doing the <laughs> fight against plastic straws, and it turns out that that yeah. it wasn't BS. That obviously we, that needed to happen, but no, that was oh look at this distraction wasn't while it? they're yeah. doing something even worse yeah. over here. The fact yeah. that what is it like? Is it ninety percent most of the most of the rubbish and the plastic pollution in the oceans is because of the fishing industry? And it's not plastic straws with turtles, you know, having plastic straws up turtles' noses. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I think I think scuba divers, we, we do a lot already. Um, I, I've mentioned it in quite a few videos mm. where we, we are sort of very consciously conscious about the uh, the environment and, uh, and how to help because we, we see a lot of it firsthand. Um, because a lot of like plastic ends up in the oceans it is kind of the final point so it collects there so we tend to see it more than others uh, as soon as it's under the surface a lot of like normal people don't really tend to see it mm -hmm. um but yeah i think it is just a matter of just keep doing what you're doing and if you do see something then it it is not it's not beneath you to um to like collect a bit of rubbish and like dispose of it properly mm. um i mean i i do it around my local dog park you you see all like this stuff and uh, yeah you just put it in a bag and then when you pass a bin you throw it away it's it's not like beneath you mm. um 
you, you shouldn't just walk past it because we actually do need to get to a point of you know what no one else is going to do it um we we need to all sort of come together as as a like a community and uh, and together just go oh you know what um no we we, we all need to uh, sort of help out and tidy up um and yeah i think just sort of share it online because a lot of social media has kind of encouraged people in in certain ways and like oh okay someone else is doing this and that kind of reinforces okay if i see everyone else doing whatever it is that makes it a little bit easier for them to go oh okay yeah maybe i'll help out so if you are sort of doing things just just take a photo like with the um the beach clean app from two minutes it's literally that's it it's instagram but for litter pickers basically you take a photo of what you've collected and that kind of encourages others to go oh actually you know what i'll 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 try that next mm. time and do a good thing you get that sort of rush of endorphins i've done a good thing today mm. um at um at work again sort of similar things just kind of have that um, sort of casual discussion obviously don't force people to do it or shame them or anything oh you should shame them puts... always shame them <laughs> So, but that kind of that kind of puts their defences up because they're like, no. oh no, no, and and they'll just like move it into secret. So that's, no, that's when you do a game of friends, people. mate. You get the walking through the office, Shane. Ding, ding. <laughs> you get the bell out. Yeah, um, Mark, Mark dropped a Mars bar <laughs> packet on the floor rather than put it on the bin. Shane, <laughs> ding ding. It's, it's the only way. Um, just um, just sort of consider things like um, like with. Uh, the Internet Fusion Group, who um, who sort of simply scuba is, is our our sort of mother company, as it were. Um, and uh, they they look, overlords, overlords. They they basically look at everything that they're buying and they consider the packaging that it comes in. And then w we have that discussion with our suppliers. Basically, say, well, why does it need to come in plastic? Um, come up with something better basically um, so yeah if if you do sort of buy office supplies whatever it is and and there is a more sort of eco-friendly alternative then yeah because that that one little change will make a, a big difference going forwards and if the suppliers see that more people are going towards like eco-friendly alternatives mm. then they're going to change what they invest in because oh no one's buying the stuff that's wrapped in plastic i'm not going to buy that anymore or sell that anymore because nobody buys it mm. so i think there is that uh, kind of air of things that um that more people need to be sort of a bit more conscious okay you're saving 5p or something because you you're getting the one that's wrapped in plastic but going forwards actually you should probably be spending that 5p because it's it's worth it for the entire planet we yeah. all need to work together with this exactly. um, and yeah definitely the um the blame needs to be put back on the corporations because there's i can't remember the exact number but it's like 95 percent of the plastic is produced by 10 companies mm. um there was a great post on surfers against sewage um i think yes. it was last night and um and there's a big yellow banner basically saying that the top 12 uh, sort of worst contributors and plastic producers and it's it's all the usual ones from uh, from McDonald's and Coca-Cola and uh, and Tesco's and whatnot um, and yeah because a lot uh, as we as we mentioned at the uh, the beginning the uh, the whole sort of plastic straws things so like yeah it's great that we have basically had this cultural shift where plastic straws are no longer acceptable but a lot of that is kind of marketing and distraction in kind mm. of yeah yeah go 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 focus on this uh general public don't think about all of the the other plastic that we're producing needlessly in a lot of cases just focus on like one thing and how dare you you bad you bad <laughs> community for not recycling everything and it's a matter of do do what you can it's uh, in a lot of cases they have made it needlessly complicated and lobbied to have it very complicated because then that in turn sort of makes the general population go oh you know what maybe this is my fault when it's not it's it's actually the companies producing the plastics mm. fault um you're you're doing your best to recycle what you can well done you um Thanks. that's 
sort of doing yeah you, you're doing what you can uh, we need to really shift the focus onto these huge companies and say you know what no just stop it the old um, analogy that I saw years and years ago was an overflowing bathtub I'm sure I've mentioned it on the podcast before and it's if you have a bathtub that's overflowing you the first thing that you do isn't rush to the plug and uh, and sort of lift that up you shut the tap off we need to stop the production of new plastics and then we need to focus on getting rid of the ones that we already have and that's what a lot of these companies are really trying to like muddy the water and confuse things because they still want to produce the plastics because that's how they make money um they they don't want to focus on getting rid of it because why would they but what they do want to do is confuse everyone and basically say oh no you need to you need to be a better human being because you're not recycling effectively enough um yeah yeah we, we we do we do need to sort of focus on the on the big companies stop plastic production and then think about what to uh, sort of do with the plastic that we've already produced the thing is as well like i was saying to you before um before we started airing about my recycling like even because like our mm. our, our local government like uh, i'm trying to find the guy i'm basically i'm trying to name and shame the people who <laughs> who run canterbury city council's recycling scheme because it's because mm. it's absolutely disgusting they either mm. don't they either don't bother with um, collecting our recycling or it's just like we had news a couple of weeks ago that we can no longer put certain plastics or like the milk cartons in the recycling mm. because mm. they no longer deal with that part or the, the machine or the company that picks them up. They have no longer have dealings with it. So it's like, no, that's not that's not <laughs> the right thing to do. You're going backwards. Yeah, they, they really are like... <laughs> Serco, who used to have it, they were really good. I mean, they weren't the best, mm. but Serco were really mm. good with their recycling. But this new company mm-hmm. are absolutely terrible. And I, for the, mm. I cannot get their name. It's really annoying. Yeah, yeah, they're clever like that. But it's the, what really needs to be done is a, a unified, really clear, simple way of saying this is recyclable, this is isn't yeah i know on a lot of um, packaging nowadays you do get a um a pretty clear symbol um and it, it does sort of say well the tray the plastic tray is recyclable but the film on the top is not yeah. so that i'm kind of on board with because it, it's really simple it's mm. really clear but of course it's not across the board right. and just because you see that uh, like triangular uh, sort of arrow symbol that doesn't always mean that it's recyclable in a lot of no. cases it just means that the company does recycle it doesn't mean that that specific item is recyclable no. Do you, and i know about that if uh, i've read an mm. article um basically so the recycling symbol is in mm. public domain right. yeah yeah and every time, so when you see a bit of plastic with that, every bit of plastic has that recycling logo on mm. it, but there's a number underneath and that number yeah. determines what type of plastic it is. And mm. that determines whether that plastic can be recycled. So even though the plastic has that recycling number, the symbol, it mm. all depends, that, that symbol, because it's... Um, royalty free or whatever it's in public domain yeah. they can stick it on it mm. doesn't actually mean that that plastic is recyclable it all determines yeah. on that number underneath or within that thing as well it's mm. it's and again that's yeah. shady as f yeah yeah and it's it, it's all the little things like the like a plastic coke bottle yeah you can recycle the bottle but not the actual the the stupid film that goes around it that identifies what type of coke it is yeah um we need to go back to like glass bottles um because well, i mean just, that's just that's print how I on get the mine. plastic like with, with my bleach you mm. can you can recycle the bleach bottle but you cannot recycle the plastic wrap around it and i'm like why don't you just print on the bottle yeah, then it, yeah 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 or, or just like have yeah yeah well, a bit of paper just don't don't wrap it just have a paper sticker on it stick it on yeah, there this is yeah. what this is what it contains and then that can all get recycled. 
Yeah, it, yeah, it is frustrating. And um, but it's yeah, all our fault, Mark. Needlessly. It's not the corporations. Yeah. It's us for buying it. It's all our fault. That's it. That's it. I, th- I think we we do need to um, sort of change things with our wallets and our, our sort of buying practices, and just sort of yeah, basically unify and just say right as as a general population, we're not we're not going to put up with this anymore. No. I mean, yeah, I, I've changed to um, uh, uh, milk bottles in proper glass bottles again, and they go back to the milkman and they get recycled and then basically cleaned and uh, sort of fresh milk puts back and then he delivers it back to me. So yeah, I, I haven't had a plastic milk bottle in a long, long time. So thanks for shaming yeah, the, me. These con- <laughs> Um, I can't oh, have that sort of system. I can't have a milkman where I live because it would get nicked within five seconds of them. Yeah, I am quite lucky in that I live in a bit of a cul de sac. So, yeah. um, I mean, yeah, my, my you neighbors, live in the city, mate. Yeah. They have <laughs> my to. My neighbors, bless them, they leave it out like all day. I've seen it there at like mm. one o'clock in the afternoon and the milk is still there. Oh, God. Like, oh okay. You can't can't drink that anymore because it's no. summer, but... <laughs> well, you go down the road and if some, you know, there's some elderly people that, you know, they've been living down the road pre-students and, you know, when it was proper Canterbury and they have mm. their, you know, they have their plant pots outside and it looks pretty, mm. but they have to chain them up. <laughs> they have to physically yeah, that's chain sad. them. I was just like, what? There's a plant pot? What? What I idiot? Well, there's lots of idiots that will either steal it yeah. or break it. But yeah, they have to chain yeah, them up. I'm like, on it. what is the world coming to where you have to chain up a plant pot and that you you can't even recycle recyclable plastic to your local no. Canterbury Council? Uh. Well, that's the other one because it's like, oh yeah, you can recycle it, but you you might be able to it's like check curbside yes you're like oh it's truth it's like you can recycle this at larger stores or check curbside and i check my local council website and they don't specify so i'm like well 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 <laughs> um, <laughs> there, there needs to be a really clear cut um like resolution right you know what if it can be recycled, you you have to put this huge like number six on it. Mm-hmm. If it's this type of plastic, and then on the recycling bins, every council has to say right. If it has a number one through six, you can recycle it. Put it in this bin. If it's this number, you can't do this with it. Um, I, I think we do need a big shake up, and I think that's kind of what Greece is almost going through at the moment yeah, with bless all their them. forest fires. They're like, you know what? This is really like. Uh, this is like really changing things we, we do need to pay attention and they are just right we are going to change uh whether they actually will who that, knows but that, it's kind thing. of yeah we, we do need to pay attention to this because it's, it's happening now it's not a 20 years in the future yeah okay whatever we'll, we'll deal with it later this is a you know what now we need to do something about it we have to be uh, so careful because all they need to do all the media needs to do yeah right now the cogs are working going oh right right what can we do in the media to mm. divert the this from happening like obviously because that code red uh, document mm. came out. I can't remember the the CCP. Well, I don't. I don't even know what it is. But basically, it's saying like, look, mate, you, you thought that the world was gonna go up one and a half degrees in like thirty years, whatever. It's like, well, actually, if we continue doing what we're doing, it's gonna be a lot. It's gonna be a lot quicker, a lot sooner, and people are gonna burn, people are gonna drown, and people are gonna freeze to mm. death when they really shouldn't. Yeah. So, yeah, because yeah. it's all well and good saying, oh yeah. All of these people, they, they escaped the blaze. And like, yeah, but all of these fields, all of that crops, it's, it's like cool. y- you've lost everything. Yeah, that, y- that, y- that woodland that's been there for hundreds of thousands of years is gone. That carbon, yeah. again, depending on the area, it's not going to take out a lot of carbon in the area, but it was doing something that's no yeah. lo- longer there. Yeah, and you've got to this, start from scratch now. You've got to start from scratch. And what's saying that next year when it's hotter, oh, look, it's going to spark up again. How many how many times can California burn? <laughs> you mm, know what I mean? Every year yeah. there are wildfires. Mm. It's, it's insane. Just need to, need but to yeah, anyway, Donald Trump's done mm. something silly. Look over there. Mm. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, oh, there, there vaccines give you three media. distraction there. 
You are you double jabbed? Oh, you're gonna grow a third head. Ooh. No. Look over there. I did see a good I did see a good post and it was a uh, a husband who was obviously rather passionate about it and it was his wife. Uh I think she had cancer and she was basically turned away from her like hospital appointments because the the hospital was so overrun with covid patients Ugh. that they basically said I'm sorry you you basically can't come in there's there's too many covid patients yeah. but 99% were unvaccinated so it's and he was basically saying well if you don't trust the medical professionals with the vaccine why do you trust them with your medical care mm. um it's like you you should almost like own it it's like if if you don't want to take the vaccine fine but don't come crying to the hospitals when and, uh, and use up all of their resources. Um, yeah, just, this, sh this should be uh, in. This should be an anti-vax passport. I did not want to get my jab. Yeah. You have to show one <laughs> when you go in. It's like, no, I didn't want my jab. Well, then you can't. You, 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 you fend for yourself, mate. <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. Yeah, because um, yes, yeah. I. I do get the thing of, oh, I don't want to have to produce my documents because uh, I'm a free person in a free country. I do understand that, but it gets to the point where you're like, oh, it's, it's a vaccination. Um. <laughs> the fact that, I mean, in the UK, what, nearly 80% of people have had their first jab and like 70% mm -hmm. have had their double jab. We're doing mm -hmm. all right. We're still here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, yeah. it, is, it is the thing that, yeah, 99% of people or a lot, a vast, vast majority of people who are hospitalized with COVID now are the unvaccinated. Mm. Like, well, it's obviously working. Yeah. Um, but there's so much disinformation and like distrust kind of put out in media nowadays with everything that you, you just, it's hard to trust it what is. you read. Cool. Nah. I love you, Mark. Anyway, the wonderful but, world that we live in. I was going to say, let's, <laughs> let's swiftly move on. We've gone from <laughs> shaming our local councils and fighting corporations to anti-vaxxers. Um, not that we yeah. have anything against you. You have the right, and I always believe that. I'm a fond believer. You have the right to do what you want to do. I am a strong... Yeah. Yeah, and if you die from it, then that's your fault. But then that's the point. That's your choice. Yeah, that's it. As long as it doesn't negatively affect other people yeah exactly uh, that. yeah yeah go nuts yeah do what hey. you do anyway let, 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 let's wind the show down mark let, let's end it on that fun That's bombshell it. if you if you made it this far through the podcast um <laughs> well well done well done you yeah um but yeah don't don't forget to uh sort of hit that sort of follow or subscribe button wherever you are head over to youtube if you're not already on youtube and uh, subscribe to the channel because we do all sorts of content um normally it's a bit more scuba diving focused um but we do talk about other stuff if you do enjoy us talking about other stuff then let us know maybe we'll do a, a, a weekly show on it um yeah. yeah if you want us to focus on anything else uh, other than scuba diving by all means sure and i we're happy to talk about anything yes um, we are. <laughs> apart from apart from my little pony or bronies that's where i draw the line yeah, I don't know much about that. Yeah, yeah, uh, you do, Mark. Like, I've seen I your kind bedroom. Of, I kind of fear. No, I kind of fear doing the research because the internet is a scary. It has some very yeah. scary corners. <laughs> well, so, uh, going off topic again, but you know we get those um, the, the the links to the the naughty sites that get blocked on YouTube. I accidentally yes. clicked one the other day on my work computer no. and I literally clicked it <laughs> and I was like, oh no, I closed it. And I'm like, oh no, I'm going to get, I'm going to get a call for looking at porn. Yeah, let me clear on my, my... <laughs> Oh no. Oh no. Sean, you've been looking Just at Asian girls. I'm like, it was a, it Just was think a of the break. ads. <laughs> no. <laughs> literally it was a micro second, but you know, I'm going to get bombarded with, I don't know, certain dolls. Of a certain, yeah. Well, because I did it on on your headphones or on sort of like devices. Have you seen a, a square logo with like a letter Z or a Z in it? It's like ZZ. And it's... Oh, yeah. Yeah. So apparently that is some kind of like... It's a bit like Bluetooth, but if, if you contact, if you have two devices and they touch one another or something, then they like talk to one. I don't know. Touching the I, tips, I mate. read, kind of. I read that somewhere, um, 
and in like a product menu with something new. And I was like, oh, is that what that symbol means? Oh, okay, that's interesting. I tried it, didn't work. Maybe I was doing something wrong. And then it kind of popped into my mind yesterday and I was like, oh, yeah, let me just like Google so to see what it was and, and nothing came up. And I went on to, to Sennheiser because that's who my, the headphones ma uh, manufactured. And now all I get is Sennheiser adverts on YouTube and on Instagram and it's just everywhere. And you're like, yeah, I get targeted ads, but try and be a little more clever. Just because I've visited a website doesn't mean that I specifically want. <laughs> yeah. It was research. It, it wasn't me looking to buy. Um, but that's, right. that's the consumer world we live in nowadays. Um, anyway, the outro. <laughs> yeah, like, like, share and subscribe. Um, don't forget to, uh, to head over to simplyscuba.com uh, if you're looking to, uh, to buy any scuba diving equipment. Uh, there'll be links down in the uh, description below, but we do sell all sorts of interesting stuff and we try and put as much information on each listing as possible just to, uh, to make your life a bit easier. Um, if there is any information that you want to know about any particular piece of uh, equipment, let us know down in the comments below. Uh, if you are looking to buy anything, we have both 0% finance options from Klarna, but we also have Adyen as well, which just makes your uh, online shopping a little bit safer when you're buying through the Simply Scuba website. Don't forget to check out the Two Minute Foundation uh, if you just literally search for the two letter two letter, Le letter, letter, letter two. two. <laughs> That's a new one. Uh, the number two and then the word minute uh, and they should uh, they should pop up. But again, they'll be linked down in the description. Uh, if you do have any questions, comments, queries or corrections about anything that you've heard across the Simply Scuba channel, use the hashtag AskMark. It just makes it a lot easier for us to find and, uh, and whatever you do sort of put on, um, as long as it's interesting, then we will mention it in the Friday show. Thank you for listening, everybody. And of course, safe diving. Um, and before I do my sign off, uh, apologies... Mm -hmm for everyone who's now going to be getting Sennheiner adverts or dodgy <laughs> dodgy uh, pornographic adverts on their feeds. I can only apologise about Alexa, this. Alexa, <laughs> buy scuba regulators. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, stay classy, <laughs> scuba divers. <laughs> the Deco Stock Podcast is produced and recorded by Simply Scuba, the UK's number one dive store. Visit today at simplyscuba.com.